So which one is most important in the diet, protein or energy? With, with what? That's the million dollar question. Okay, we had that. That is a recurring debate for all of 2020. All right, all right, let me put that down. I think maybe thanks to, to this program, keep bringing nutritionists and, and um, people who create feed on here, and then it becomes a thing where one side is saying protein is more important, the other side is saying energy is what's more important to small ruminants. So you tell us, you give us your your uh, opinion. All right, let me let me put that. Let me put that to rest. You gonna put it to rest? Hold on, hold on. You say you gonna put this to rest? That is that is an, that is something I think everybody would have would have understood by now because because people in Jamaica have been saying it. Jennings has been saying it a lot. Bill Zimmerman has been saying it a lot. Um, and I talk, and I talk about for the past forty years. Yeah. Okay. So what is it? No. For ruminant animals, the first limiting factor of production is energy, not protein. Yeah? And I will, I could go as far as saying that for the animal to remain alive, for the ruminant animal to remain alive and produce at minimum levels, you don't have to feed the animal protein. What? That is a fact. Now, let me explain that now. Now, the ruminant animals have capacity to utilize what we call non-protein non nitrogenous sources and convert into protein. Yeah? Now, the most, and listen to this carefully, the most important source of protein for the animal is not dietary protein. I will say that again. The most important source of protein for the ruminant animals is not dietary protein. That, is, that means it is not the protein in the feed that the animal consumes. It's actually protein from microbial sources. So what we need to do firstly, so we feed ruminant animals on two planes. So the first plane is to satisfy the requirement for the rumen micro, microorganisms in the rumen. That's the first thing we do. And then the second plane is to feed the animals so we we are um, and this is the concept of bypass protein something. I'm gonna explain that. So we feed the animal. So the first thing we do, we feed the human microorganism, right? And then on the second plane, we feed the animal. I'm gonna explain that. Now, you you will be aware that you know your people eat things like urea in diet, that they mix in what they might put cooked urea, etc. No, you yeah, in silage and stuff, they put you yeah, in yeah. yeah. Even in the feed, they, they, they're doing TMR. Now, you have mm -hmm. an example of what we call a non-fruit nitrogen. It's a nitrogenous, it's a nitrogenous source, but it's not a protein. Yeah? Okay. Now, when the non fruit nitrogenous sources are exposed to the animal, they are needed because they are direct requirements by the micro. Yeah? So they now use mm -hmm. that, that non protein nitrogen like, like urea, ammonia, and other, um, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, um, I'm trying to use a term. But things that are not protein, they are nitrogen, but they are not protein. I don't know if I could be simpler than that. Now they need that mm -hmm. for their benefit. So when they get them happy, they're feeding what they want and they're happy and so on. There are biological organisms that they grow, they multiply, right? And when microorganisms, the outflow of microorganisms, feed particles from human into the small intestine, the microorganisms themselves provide the, the, um, the primary source of protein for the animals. So the concept now is that you feed the animals, you feed the microorganisms for them to grow and multiply, yeah? And through the natural flow rate uh, of the two that they themselves get digested and absorbed in the small intestine and produce protein. That is the primary protein source for ruminant animals. Yeah? Okay. Now, and that is why I said before you don't even have to the animal protein for the animal to survive. Because once they have good non-protein natural sources, 
they could produ- produce adequate protein for themselves. The protein from microbial source is an ideal protein. There's, there's nothing deficient in that protein. I'm going to talk about protein quality, and I'm going to talk about protein quality a little bit. There is nothing deficient with that protein. If um, people who are, inter- who are involved in like um, non-ruminants, like pigs and chicken, they would have known or heard about um, they talk about amino acids and ideal protein. Mm-hmm. The discussion about amino acids is not much fun for ruminant animals. Because if we rely on the micro protein to be the primary source, the amino acid requirements are satisfied full stop. Yeah? Now, the difference in terms of protein quality for non ruminant animals is as a result of the proportion of the amino acids that are formed in that protein, that are that form that protein. Yeah? So that is why you will see corn and corn based diet are not protein source because corn protein is a very poor quality protein, especially for, for ruminant animals because it is highly deficient in, a, in at least three of the amino acids. Yeah? So we don't talk about protein, about amino acids when we talk about ruminant animals because the primary source of protein is perfect in terms of the amino acid profile. That that this person don't come. Yeah. So so let me so let me ask. So in the in the form of concentrates, why there are why are they always touting the food protein percentage? That is a that's an excellent question. And that's a, I, I, I think it's the easiest way to characterize the feed. Because we were taught we were taught we, we, we were taught have this obsession with protein right the first thing if somebody if somebody say all right i have a grass over there the first question is what percent protein or what percent food protein yo i'm guilty we were, we were, I got we, an we, assessment we were on wired my, that way we were on my i'm guilty of that i got an f- assessment on our pasture and that's one of the first questions i asked what was the Food protein percentage, and I was so impressed with it. I thought I was my part was doing well, but now I'm learning that it doesn't really have greater importance than the energy the animal gets from the pasture. Yeah, the energy is because the, the primary source of protein is the source. The primary source of energy is from that source. That can produce energy by itself. So all the energy the animal have to have to use to do it from what it eats. Okay, so give us an example, give us examples of energy source in a woman's diet. No, the concentrated feed of is an energy source. Once it's a corn-based concentrate. Okay. Yeah. Once it's corn-based, grain-based, grains are energy source. No, not some grains are protein sources, like soybean has a protein. Okay. So most of your also, most of it, most of your your forages are, are, are more, especially grasses are are, mm-hmm. are better energy source than protein sources. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, now, energy from the grass it really comes from the, the animal um digesting fiber material, you know, you know. Yeah. So that's where the animal get most of its energy energy from with respect to forages. Now, okay. Now you ask a very interesting question and, and and i'm glad that you did it so we have to do a real thing to talk about protein nutrition because food protein is not is not a if we have been focusing on energy as, as much as we've been focusing on protein our industry will be twice as better off yeah and because, you want to elaborate on that and because people because we were trained that way to think because and and, and for the same same idea is that the only source of energy is for the, for the animal eat, right? But the main source of protein is not from the feed that the animal eat. So therefore, our endeavor should be to ensure that we um, optimize the energy intake. Now, when we optimize the energy intake, you know, we will satisfy the protein requirements, you know. Yeah. Yes. The other way around is not so is not is not is not accurate. Oh, okay. Yeah, 
And let me let me tell you, talk something now. And this is something I've been I've been doing with, with respect to people I've been training in a you know formal classroom setting. I do a course in, in um, advanced nutrition, and the course only focus on protein and energy utilization and um, metabolism. Now for ruminant, yeah, yes, protein. And the reason why we don't emphasize so much on on protein is because what we know of protein, and that's why it's called crude protein, is that we focus on protein concentration instead of on the quality of protein. So 16% protein, 15% protein, 80% protein does not mean anything.